He tied his running shoes, put in his earbuds, and went jogging on the trail. But he wasn't alone. He said, these guys are here. Out of nowhere, evil emerged from the desert shadows. These guys are following me. Beaten and strangled. He was so scared and so frantic. His body dumped by the side of the road. Who would want Josh Dufort killed? Was Josh Dufort the victim of a random attack? Josh's apartment was three blocks down the road. And that's when he was murdered. Mm -hmm. Or was Josh worth more dead than alive? It's too many coincidences. Josh grew up in the small town of Dansville, Michigan. He packed up and left for the bright lights of Las Vegas to become an actor. Josh met his close friend Nicholas Gaetanos in acting class. How would you describe Josh? His personality, passions, likes, dislikes? Josh was a really, really great and passionate guy. He was always there for his friends. And the girl who worked at the local bakery was smitten. So much so that Shannon Lutz fell in love and moved in with Josh. Was it a, a serious relationship? It was, yeah. We were very quickly completely inseparable. Our lives fused together. Um, I moved out of the house, moved in with him, and we were together 24-7. The most gregarious, sweetest, caring, sarcastic, lightest person in the room. He walked in and everybody was immediately drawn to him. He was a magnet. Any enemies? No. There was not a person who didn't love him, want to be with him, or want to be him. But there was something else that ignited Josh's passion. Boxing. Josh became fast friends with a lightweight champion named Don Juan Fatrell. Yes, that's his name. Don Juan. What do you know about Josh's relationship with Don Juan Fatrell? Josh was young and um, naive but hungry for any opportunity in town. He came in and was a sort of mentor and helpful wing for Josh and was seemingly a really great influence. Well, you say seemingly mm -hmm. a great influence. Why do you have that caveat? From what Josh thought of him, he saw someone who was like a big brother and was trying to help him, but it would never pan out. They would be supposed to have lunch, supposed to work out together, supposed to have a little meeting, talk about their goals, and Don Juan would cancel on him. One of those goals, Shannon says, was to make bank selling t-shirts on the Vegas Strip. They um, just one day had an idea putting clever or cool looking designs on t-shirts. Don Juan said, okay, come over, jog over, we're gonna work out, and then we're gonna talk about this t-shirt business, and it, they never got to speak about it. So this business never got off the ground? No. Do you think that was on purpose? Yes. I don't think that the t-shirt business, Josh thought it was gonna be an actual thing, but I think that it was just Don Juan preying on Josh wanting to do everything he could. Um, and coming up with a reason to get him over there, to guarantee that he would come over. Josh's acting coach, Shari Flaherty, worried about her star pupil climbing into the ring and taking punches. I got kind of confused about it, and I said, Josh, I thought you wanted to be an actor. You're going to end up hurting your face. I mean, you think about those things, because we had booked him several commercials already at that time. And he mentions that I just have to last three rounds, I can make an extra thousand bucks, and I need the money. Shari says one day when she was complaining about the high cost of health insurance, Josh surprised her with a zinger. And he nonchalantly says, yeah, I have health insurance now, I don't have to pay for it. And I go, health insurance? And he proceeded to tell me that he called him DJ. DJ got me health insurance, and I looked at him, and I go, what? Don Juan. Yeah, Don Juan. And I said, Don Juan got you health insurance? He goes, yeah. I go, what? Health insurance for a healthy 23-year-old athletic guy? That raised, you know, suspicions to me, like, huh? Suspicions were raised even further one warm November evening. Shannon says Josh told her he was going to jog over to Don Juan's house, nestled in a gated community on a golf course. Do you remember the last conversation you'd had with Josh? Um, yeah, we um, had never gotten in a fight before. I think we pecked each other aggressively on the cheek and it was a see you later and that was the last we spoke. Is that raw for you? I mean, the last time you had a conversation 
with Josh, you guys were fighting? Yeah, um, we had never, it had been sunshine and rainbows. But quickly, a menacing dark cloud would wipe out the sunshine forever. Shannon says on the way to Don Juan's, Josh left him a terrifying voicemail. So you're listening to these voicemails now. Mm -hmm. And what do you hear? There's three messages from Josh, and he said, these guys are here. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get into the gate. They're following me. He's on the corner of Eastern and Pecos Ridge, and that he's just frantic, and he's like, you need to come get me right now. These guys are following me. And he repeats it several times, and then times when the phone cuts out. Probably his last moments. Yeah. But who were they? Henderson, Nevada police say Josh was attacked his lifeless body discovered at sunrise the next morning. It's a jogger who basically finds Josh Dufort on the side of this road, beaten and strangled to death. He may have died that morning or the night before. As detectives retrace Josh's last steps and talk to his friends, the trail leads them in a direction no one saw coming. Next, investigators uncover a diabolical plot hidden in the insurance policy. Was it all just a ruse, or could it spell something far more sinister? So your understanding is that Josh was tricked. I think that, um... What could the motive possibly be to, to kill this guy? The motive could be money, a lot of it. Apparently, Josh was well-insured. 